G'day there, you're watching the Aussie BIM Guru. Today I've got a video on Revit for you where we're going to talk about how to build a really simple joinery system in Revit that you can use on small scale projects. Now it's not going to be quite suitable for large scale projects, it's going to be a bit of a Revit hack, um, but bear with me, I think it might have some use for you. So we're going to try and create a really simple system. Um, unlike the system on the right, the one on the left um, takes about five minutes to build, not even. Um, and the one on the right, obviously these are detailed families with lots of parameter constraints um, and they're much harder to set up. You do need to dedicate a lot of time towards this. Um, I do obviously sell my own casework collection, but what I'm going to show you is pretty much able to be set up out of the box. And it's, it's really good for small scale project setup where you're just trying to really quickly just lay out joinery. So if you're doing a housing project and you just want to model a kitchen, this technique you could let you model a kitchen um, very roughly in like a few minutes. Um, whereas laying out casework units one by one um, is a lot slower as well. So it's going to be really quick and easy. Um, but warning, this is a Revit hack. It's not, um, it's not necessarily using Revit the way that it's intended or using the category of elements that you typically would use to build joinery units. Um, so this may not be BIM manager approved, um, even though I, I was a BIM manager. So um, I guess just check with your own BIM team before you implement something like this. Um, if you're a small scale Revit user, so you're doing your own residential housing designs, this might help you. Anyway, um, let's just dive right into Revit and I'm going to show you how to do it from scratch. So on the right, you have like my detailed casework families that I typically use. So there's a bench, um, there's an under bench cupboard, over bench cupboards and bulkheads. And on the right, on the left, you have my system. Um, now nothing you see there is casework. It's actually walls, reveals and floors. Um, which is a little bit unorthodox um, for categorization. Typically, we wouldn't use these categories for joinery, but I found this a really quick and easy system to set up. Um, so let's just do it from the ground up. So I'm going to start a whole new project. I'm just going to save this in case I need to go back to it for some reason. And I'm just going to create a new project. Um, I'm just going to base it on the Autodesk template. So you can use exactly the same things I'm using. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to build an underbench cupboard. And we're going to do this using a wall, um, which is a little bit strange, but bear with me. So if I go to create a wall, and I'm just going to grab a generic wall. Now we're going to make a 600 deep underbench, underbench unit. So I'm going to edit type. I'm just going to duplicate it. And I'm just going to call this uh, UB600 for underbench 600, 600, uh, 600 deep. Okay, so for the structure, we're going to make this thing 600 deep. And you can pick whatever finish you want it to be. Um, for example, we can go and find some sort of laminate finish if, um, if you want to make it like a joinery laminate. Uh, so I think there should be a laminate material somewhere in the AEC materials. Um, yep, so we'll just get a white laminate it's from the AEC library. And I'm just going to model this uh, from a finish face exterior. I'm just going to do 1200 wide for now. We're going to do a 1200 by 600 cupboard. I'm going to disallow join just for now. Um, now, if you can imagine this being a cupboard, we'd make it from ground floor up to a bench at 900, but we're going to downset it by the bench's thickness. So we're going to make this an unconnected 870 high cupboard. Now, at the moment, there's no detail in this element, so it doesn't really look like a piece of joinery yet. We're going to integrate a kicker in the unit. So to do this, we're going to build a reveal family. I'm going to make a new family, and I'm going to make it based on the metric profile. So I need to find the metric profile template. And we're just going to build a box that's centered upon, centered upon the crosshair. I'm going to add a equality constraint in both directions. And I'm going to make one of these dimensions the width. So I'll call this uh, width on a tight basis. And I'm going to call one of these constraints a height. I'm going to make sure the profile usage is set to reveal. Just give the family a quick purge. Usually like doing that. Um, now we're going to make a, a kicker in this case. So we're going to be cutting this out of our wall at its base. So we're going to make this 150 mil high as a kicker and 50 millimeters deep. And I'm just going to call this 50 by 150 kicker. While I'm here, I'm going to make a couple of other things. So when we do an overbench unit, 
we're going to carve out the back of the overbench unit so that the door has a little lip on it. Our overbench unit is going to be 350 deep, so we're going to make this little carve out 300 by 50 high. So we're going to call this a 300 by 50 OB or overbench. So we're going to make this 50 mil high, 300 wide. Actually, uh, yes, yeah, that's correct. And then we're going to make a reveal that we can use to cut gaps in all the doors on our units if we want to add that level of detail. So in this case, I'm just going to do a generic 10 by 10. And again, this will just be 10 by 10. Cool, so we have three types. So at this point, you can just save this family to somewhere that is on your server or your desktop or anywhere really. And I'll just call this joinery reveal. And I'm going to load this into my project. And we're going to go back to this underbench unit. And we're going to integrate a little bit of the Revit hack now. So we're going to edit type. We're going to go to structure. And I'm going to add the preview tab. So now we're looking at the wall. We're going to go to section. And we're going to add a reveal. So we're going to add. And in this case, we're going to be adding the 50 by 150 kicker. If I go apply, now we can see we can see our reveal. I'll add it on the, um, the interior side. And in this case, it's not quite set out the way we'd want it to be. It's sort of sitting sitting half on, half off. So we do need to inset it. So we're going to offset this by 25 to push it in, and we're going to distance it by 75. And now, if we have a look at our little joinery unit, we'll check it out. It has a kicker. So it looks a little bit more like a piece of joinery now. Now, the great thing about this is you can take it around corners as well. So if I just re-allow join, and keep in mind you have sort of independent control over the kicker as well, if you do need it. Um, but if I create another one of these, I can actually trim these together to create corner cupboards as well, um, which are usually really hard to do using casework units. Um, obviously, you'll have to do them eventually. But if you're just doing planning, I mean, you can save yourself a lot of time doing this. Okay, so now let's make a bench. So to make a bench, we can just use a floor, essentially. So I'm going to edit type, duplicate, and just call this a 30 millimeter bench. I'm going to go to its structure. Make it 30 mil thick, and we'll just go and find a material for it. Let's just use a stone. We'll find a stone bench top. Uh, so somewhere in here. Marble. We'll make a marble bench. Great. A little bit gaudy, but that's okay. And we can just pick the outline of our walls at this point. And just trim, trim the results. And just like that, if we offset it by 900... We have a bench. Um, so we've added two components by joinery system. Now let's focus on the overbench cupboards instead. Now typically for these, I make these 350 deep and I mount them at 1500 up to 2.1. So I'm gonna put this at 1500 above ground floor with an unconnected height of 600. I'm gonna edit type, duplicate, and I'm gonna call this OB350. I'm gonna go to its structure and make it 350. And I'm gonna go into its reveal and we're going to carve out the back of the unit rather than the front as a kicker. So I'm going to change my profile to this 350 by 50 OB. I'm just going to set its distance and offset to zero for now. And we need to push this back. So we're going to, in this case, we're going to make the distance uh, 200. No, sorry, we're going to make the offset 200. And that will push this to the back of the unit because it's centered and then offset. For the distance, um, we're just going to move this up by 25. And now we essentially have an overbench lip formed at the front of our unit. So if I OK this, OK this, check it out. Now we have a little overbench cupboard with a little articulation on the door as well. So we have that little bit more detail in our unit. So it's really shaping up and becoming quite a simple system to set up. Um, finally, I'm going to create a bulkhead. So I'm going to copy to the same spot. I'm going to put this at 2100 instead and just put this up to 24. And we're going to duplicate this, and I'm just going to do BH350 for bulkhead 350. I'm going to edit, and I'm just going to take away that reveal. Now, you could actually add a reveal at the top, so we could go from top, and we could add the 10 by 10 in this case. Now, we do need to change some of those properties, so we'll have to distance and offset it by 5, I believe. Um, we may need to distance it by negative 5 in this case. And then if we OK that, we get a little sort of shadow line in this case. Now, you could also do the same thing at the top of the overbench unit as well. I believe you can add reveals to the top and the bottom. So we'll go back to reveals and we'll add an extra reveal. 
we'll add the 10 by 10 and we're going to do this at the top and we're going to distance it by negative 5, offset it by 5. And in this case, we do need to put it on the other side by the looks of it. I think I had it on the wrong side. So I'm going to put it on the exterior. Whoops, I did that the wrong way around. I need to put the other one on the interior. There we go. There we go. Now you have a little shadow line that occurs at the top there. So when you render it, you'll get a shadow gap. And we can do the same on our underbench unit as well. So we can go to its reveals. We can add that 10 by 10 at the top. Distance negative 5, interior side offset by 5. There we go. So we already have um, a little bit of articulation in our joinery system, but obviously it's, it's highly flexible. Um, it's very quick to set up, very quick to manipulate, um, very easy to use. And on top of that, we can also just create doors or door articulations by using the reveal tool. So I'm going to edit type, just rename this to a 10 by 10 and just call it a joinery reveal. We're going to pick our 10 by 10 profile. And we can place either uh, horizontal articulation joints or we can change our reveal to vertical. And we can add vertical articulation joints. And the way that this works, even if it has a reveal at the bottom in the wall type, it just cuts the portion that it actually can, can contact on the face. And you can really quickly just set up um, articulation joints in your joinery. Um, and obviously it's a pretty rough system, like you would need to probably go into elevation to do proper setouts. But I mean, you know, for, for rendering purposes, uh, we've really just created a quite efficient system um, to work with. And, and this is great for like planning stages where you're not as worried about what types of units you might need. Uh, but let's say, like, you know, we have a draw unit over here. So we could add, in this case, we could add a horizontal reveal. And then we can take that reveal, paper it back and just copy it down a few times. And you can see that you can really quickly create, um, you know, some relatively, relatively decent looking joinery units in 3D. I mean, if I go into say Enscape, for example, we should end up with something that does render with shadow lines and look quite convincing. So I'll just show you how this looks in, in a 3D rendering software, because that is another challenge with casework units. A lot of the time adding all those little shadow lines can be quite cumbersome. Um, whereas a system like this, you know, is, is very quick and easy. So if I just go and check out what we've done, um, there you go. Like in a 3D sense, like we've essentially created something that's quite quite easy um, to visualize. I mean, obviously that marble looks god awful, uh, but you know, in terms of the articulations, they're there and you can you can pick them out and it's, it's quite a good outcome. So if you're doing a little planning exercise for a residential client, maybe this is enough. And you can see we set this up in, you know, like five to 10 minutes tops. Um, so I think it's a really easy and handy system um, for certain types of Revit users and certain types of projects. So hopefully you found that interesting and useful. Um, and I'll probably upload this model to my GitHub as well, just so you have access to what I've developed um, just in this, this short session. Now, as I was cleaning up um, my model to put it on GitHub, I actually had a little revelation um, about how this system could be expanded further. So what I've done in addition is I've also created just a 10 millimeter tile splashback wall with no reveals. And I've also created a 600 millimeter bench family, um, again with no reveals. And what you can actually do is put these all into a stacked wall um, to make a combinated unit, which is pretty funky. Um, so I've already created the stacked wall, but I'll show you how I did it. So I've got a stacked wall at the moment, and as I place it, you'll see it places everything for me. Um, and as I change the height, the bulkhead increases. So it's a really, really interesting technique actually that I didn't think about. And you can even trim the entire system as you go. So it's pretty, it's pretty funky. Um, there are some limits like this little gap here is pretty unavoidable. Um, but what, what, what you can do is essentially just stack all these walls on top of each other. So in this case, I've got a, a underbench unit up to 860 a bench on top for 40 mil tiles up to the overbench unit, um, overbench for 600, and then a variable bulkhead on top. Um, so you can essentially create like a, a typical kitchen bench unit in just a single wall type. Um, so it's really, really funky. Um, I didn't even think that, you know, that it could go this deep, but yeah, I guess with a little bit of creativity and out of the box thinking, um, you can you can really go there. Um, and as well as this, I, I realized you could do things too, like reveal, the inside of an underbench unit to carve out the shelving um, as well. So there's other ways you could expand upon what I've shown you to enhance the graphic fidelity um, of what I've done. 
Um, so definitely keep these in mind and see see what you can do with the system and expand upon it because I guess there's more potential in it than, than I realized. Um, but there you go. <laughs> So um, I do actually have a casework collection I sell through my business. If you are looking for a high quality casework collection with all the different types of units you could need um, to lay out a, a system, um, it's $75. So it's not that expensive for say like a business to purchase. Um, for an individual, I know maybe it's not as feasible or for a student, um, but yeah, definitely look into it if, you're, if you know you're gonna have to go and produce a whole bunch of casework for your company. This is like, you know, not even half an hour of billable time for most companies. So more than happy to, to take any questions if you're curious about what's in this pack. But um, otherwise, hopefully what I showed you today can help you um, do something as well. So like I said, the files will be on GitHub. Um, but but th thanks for watching today. And I guess hopefully you found this useful and interesting. And remember, ask your BIM manager if you're in a big company, don't, don't do this without him knowing because we've obviously used walls and floors and they're not necessarily the right categories for casework typically. Um, and they may interfere with things like wall schedules and floor schedules and dynamo workflows. So just use it with care. Um, but I guess hopefully this has shown, shown you something you can use that saves you a bit of time. So thanks for watching today. If you're not already following and subscribing, feel free to do so. And I look forward to seeing you on future videos. Thanks. Take care. Bye.